appreciate it. Yeah, so today I am the Secretary of Forestry. This morning, this afternoon, I'm in But uh, I'm very fortunate, and I'll tell the other secretaries at this point, and I have agreed to return to state government in 2004. I think I uh, came on January 2005. I had two agencies, two major agencies. Both of those agencies were senior agencies that had been around for a long time. This one for almost 100 years. I probably and had been actually operating in the state government for 130 years. So anyway, both of those agencies had senior people, good people, and so I was very fortunate and very lucky when, when I came on board. And those kind of individuals, like Carl is one of those, who came on just before I did, uh, but carries that mission and understands the focus uh, of what goes on in forestry. Uh, in for Virginia. Well, my task today is very simple because uh, if I followed the instructions of my, my mentor years ago when I had a lecture from Hunter Andrews, <laughs> Hunter Andrews says there's only one thing you do. You do not, when you're introducing a governor, you have all the biographical information on them. What you have to do is look and say, and, and I present to you and have you welcome the, uh, His Excellency, the Governor, the Commonwealth of Virginia. <laughs> As many of you know, we do these cabinet community days four times a year. We come to a different region of the state and uh, we visit state agencies, other you know local projects that we want to learn from. It's a great way for our cabinet to get to know folks, but especially for people in different regions to get to know our cabinet. So this is our 11th and we'll have one more uh, in 2008 uh, in the Petersburg area, but uh, it's really good to be here. We were here a year ago uh, for a cabinet community day in the Charlottesville area and intended scheduled to come here for lunch and then the schedule changed around and we weren't able to come, but we wanted to definitely make it. So that's why we're starting this today. And the rest of the day we're going to be over kind of in Waynesboro, Stanton, uh, Augusta, Rockingham area doing some really good events, including a tour outdoors, Bob. So uh, <laughs> and on that farm visit, I'm praying that the rain gets out of the system before we get over there. But, uh, but it, it is very good to be with you. Uh, forestry is a critical industry to Virginia, so it's, a, it's an agency that has been around for nearly 100 years, but that recognizes the priority of forestry. Um, you all know, I'm sure, because uh, you guys have been great uh, spokespersons for this, that the, uh, the study that Weldon Cooper did this year to update uh, the analysis of the economic effect of forestry and agriculture in Virginia suggested that the combined effect, direct and indirect, was nearly $80 billion a year, and of that forestry is about $27 billion. Yes. Yeah, 20, about $27 billion. Uh, 144,000 jobs, one in 33 employed Virginians works in a forestry-related uh, industry. Um, so it's a key part of our economy first. Uh, it's a key part of our culture and our heritage, but it's also a key ally in work that we're trying to do to preserve the environment. Um, the, uh, the tree cover of Virginia does such great work in, uh, as it has done since God created it to uh, uh, make our air cleaner, make our water cleaner. Uh, so the initiative that we have, which has been a very aggressive one that Preston Bryant has been leading, but the forestry has played a key role in it. To preserve 400,000 acres of open space, uh, forestry has played a key role in that. And uh, we're really on track to meet that 400,000 acre goal with a few breaks in my next year and a half, but I think we'll get there. Um, and so whether it's at the economy or just our history and, and heritage or, or the ongoing challenges we have in managing the environment, uh, making sure we do what we can to uh, limit the effects of climate change and greenhouse gas emissions, you know, our forests are very, very important. So to my uh, cabinet, now trivia, and everybody, all the forestry uh, folks know this, but, uh, where are we in the United States in terms of as a state producer of hardwood and forestry products? Right. <laughs> 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 I didn't say you couldn't phone a friend. <laughs> Number three, Tennessee and Pennsylvania are ahead of us, but so uh, we're one of the largest forest producers. Um, and then it's not just growing in forests and having forest products, it's also managing a difficult resource. So one of the other things that forestry does, which they're really known for, uh, statewide or countrywide is uh, they're great in fighting forest fires and our forestry folks get went out all the time to other states. This is one of the areas where there's the most cooperation between states 
uh, in private forest fire. We loan our folks back and forth. We got some good ones. So another trivia question: 2008 thus far, we're the, you know, 12th, 13th of November today. 13th of November. How many forest fires have our forestry department folks had to fight this year already? Wildfires. Twelve fifty-six. <laughs> single worst day for wildfires that probably in the Commonwealth's history. Remember that uh, uh, Sunday, I guess it was, right before the February primary. Uh, and I remember that because it knocked out power and left, and left precincts without power and Viola, that was Viola's day. But we had wildfires all over the state due to very dry conditions, unusual wind down power lines. And so from, you know, Western Virginia to, to uh, Hanover and Carolina, significant wildfires, but the most significant ones were in Bedford and, and Franklin and Roanoke County areas. Very significant body time as well. And the fire folks just did a spectacular job. I went out to recognize the number of them in a little uh, that we did in the county a few months back. But anyway, the, you're a hard working bunch. You do something that is very, very important and we're glad to be with you today. Um, it wouldn't be a, a, the right thing to do to stand up and talk to a bunch of state employees without also just acknowledging that we're in tough times right now in the state. And everybody is having a really tight in their belt. And I wanted to just uh, just acknowledge that and thank everybody for uh, for their patience. You know, um, it is uh, when the national economists switched the forecast this summer from a growth forecast, low growth, admittedly very low growth, to recession forecast. You know, we we were not surprised because we've been seeing it really since about April of 07. April of 07 was the first time I gave a directive to state agencies to start trying to save on discretionary expenses because of the housing crisis uh, slowing the economy down. And, and since April of 07, we've been in the same mode with budget cutting rounds in October of 07 and in February of 08. And now we're in the midst of our third round with cuts that we announced uh, last week, cuts that are, that are challenging and painful, including to some agencies that are uh, in this building. Uh, and then I have another big slug that I have to work on when I present the budget to the legislature in the middle of December. And it is, uh, it's not been easy, uh, you know, it's, it's never easy, but what I tell my team is, you know, a couple of things. First, the only reason that we're hurting is that the national economy is slow and that means families and businesses are hurting and the families and businesses are having to make hard decisions and government has to as well. You know, we, one thing that, although it's painful, is a good thing is that we're not like a federal government that just you know, runs up the debt machine when times get tight. We have to make the decisions in real time, just like families and businesses do, to try to keep things balanced. And, and, uh, and that makes for painful decisions, but that kind of discipline uh, is actually, you know, we ought to be sharing the burden that families and, and, uh, and businesses feel. Um, what we try to do when we do these uh, when we work on budgets is we really try to use performance and priorities. You know, we don't treat everything the same. Um, we try to really focus on performance and priorities and try to be creative. Uh, and we've had just great work by the agency heads and the cabinet secretaries of trying to negotiate through challenging times. I will tell you this, I don't know when the challenging times will be over. You read the same newspapers that I do. And uh, when you read the front pages about you know, is the bailout package working, does the have to be more, when's the parachute going to open, when's the economy going to start climbing, nobody seems to have a, a very good crystal ball right now about that as I meet with my economists and revenue advisors in the first couple of years of being governor, you know, we always were reaching a consensus pretty easily about what the projections would be, but the most recent meeting I had but using, you know, both legislators and private sectors, which there really wasn't a consensus because there's a good deal of anxiety. But I, I say this, I mentioned to somebody yesterday, even in a tough time, we got a couple of things in Virginia we can be really thankful for. We have a more diverse economy. Um, so forestry and agriculture is strong, but you know what? Manufacturing is strong. I mean, government spending and contracting and defense spending is pretty strong. We've got good technology industry. We're not leaning so heavily on any one industry like an oil industry or something where we are really getting hammered. So that's something that we can be thankful for in the economy and ag and forestry as a department. We have some tools, um, good tools. Uh, tools like a rainy day fund, um, which some states don't have. We have good performance budgeting and a great finance team to help us work through this. Um, 
and some other tools that we use in state government, AAA bond rating is a tribute. We just got reaffirmed on our AAA the other day, and that's a tribute to our fiscal management. And then finally, we don't have some of the big problems that some other states have, like on the books. Some states are digging out of massive unfunded pension obligations, for example, and so the revenues are slow trying to deal with current spending in that, too. Can be pretty tough, and so we don't have that to, uh, have to deal with. But nevertheless, you know, these are challenging times. But challenging times require the, you know, the best of all of us, our most, our, uh, our most creative thinking and, and, and uh, innovative, you know, leadership. And I, I just want to say, I recognize it's challenging, but I applaud all of you guys for, you know, your service to the Commonwealth. Um, when we were named the best managed state in America earlier this year by Governing Magazine. Tied with you, time Washington. I have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the two, they gave us grades in different categories. They, they grade every state in, in money management and in infrastructure and in, and in information, which is basically the use of data to make decisions, and in people. Um, they gave us the top possible grade in information, the way we use data to make decisions. But they gave a couple of other states the top grade too, so we tied there. But the one area where we got the top rate and nobody was even tied with us was people. We got the A ranking in people by governing in another state, got an A, just a straight A for, for people. And, and uh, if you want to be ranked A in anywhere, that's where you want to have the A. Because uh, it's you that you know we rely on to, to continue to deliver the services in a way that Virginians have, have gotten accustomed to and that we would be real proud of. So anyway, it's great to be with you. We're looking forward to coming out. And, and I, and learning about it, and I'm intrigued about the Bloodhound program. <laughs> but uh, we'll have a chance to visit, I think, outside. And, and again, thanks for having us here. I know we're going to have a great day, and it's great to start it with you. Appreciate it. He was issued this ID 98 and he said he stuck it in his wallet that day and has not touched it since other than when he pulled it out and put it in his bag for me. So, it's something he doesn't handle every day, and you don't always have to have the shirt off the person's back, or, or you know, we can work off the footprints or whatever. So I'm gonna go get the dog and we'll get started. <laughs> Show me the man. Show me the man. Good girl! <laughs>